a gracious good day to one and all once again. Tis I, Norton the First, by grace of God, Emperor of the United States, and Protector of Mexico. Back with you once again for episode number 95 of Emperor Norton's fantastic history vlog. Today is July 14, 2020. It is our 119th day under COVID-19 restrictions in San Francisco. Let's begin with the Imperial Bonsai of the day. When we do the vlog from the Imperial Gardens, we always like to have part of the Imperial Bonsai collection on display. This is an oak tree, I believe it's a coke, no, cork oak. Yeah, I'm not sure about that, but it is an oak, and isn't it lovely? Beautiful. Well, uh, let's begin with a little bit of housekeeping from yesterday's vlog, first of all, an apology. We don't know what happened yesterday with the audio. It was definitely off. The music was too loud. Even though it was set at the exact same volume, it is always set at. So don't know what happened. Sorry it happened. Uh, it was also entirely too long. It went 30 minutes because, as you know, Monday, at least until this week, next week, I guess, is catch-up day where we catch up on the days that we missed, uh, usually three days, but we are changing the schedule of this vlog. So now it's gonna be Tuesday through Saturday. So catch up day will actually be four days, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. So we're gonna make it shorter. We're not gonna cover as many items. We're still gonna be covering a lot, but in the uh, quest for brevity, uh, we need to cut down just a little bit and make it more, watchable. So that'll be as of next week. Let's start with our national days. Uh, national Shark Awareness Day. Oh, we are aware of sharks, yes. National Nude Day. I don't think you want to see that. Pandemonium Day. Oh, that seems like every day lately, doesn't it? And Bastille Day, which we'll get to in just a moment. Oh, we forgot to do a Florida man story today, so we'll get caught up on those tomorrow. We'll do a couple of those together. Sorry about that. Forgot about it when we were laying out the vlog this morning. So let's begin with our San Francisco story. And as we so often do, we are relying on John Ralston's wonderful book, This Date in San Francisco. It was on July 14, 1933, that an 18-year-old sensation sets a Pacific Coast League record. 18-year-old batting sensation of the Coast League, as the Chronicle termed him, set a rec league record by hitting in 50 straight games for the San Francisco Seals, breaking the record set by Oakland's Jack Ness in 1915. The 18-year-old, the most talked about player on the coast, was Joseph Paul DiMaggio Jr., son of a Sicilian immigrant fisherman. DiMaggio Sr. had settled in Martinez, but after hearing the fishing was better in San Francisco, settled his family in 1915 to 2047 Taylor Street. As a kid, Joe Jr. showed little aptitude for school or his father's fishing business. His older brother, Vincent, Vince being a good baseball player, who was signed by the Seals, Joe Jr. tried out in 1933 and was also signed. By early July, the whole Pacific Coast watched to see if Joe would break Ness's record on July 13, playing the Los Angeles Angels. He tried it. He tied it. Ooh. On July 14, the Seals got off to a bad start. Los Angeles scoring three runs and five hits on the first inning until DiMaggio retired the side by catching a fly and throwing a runner out at home plate, a double play. Quote, the, that one play stamped Joe as a ball player of class, said the Chronicle. But there was more to come. After two Seals batters got to second and third bases, Joe stepped up to a thunder to thunderous applause. He swung on the first pitch and missed. Then as the cameramen flashing lights crowded the plate and ordered back by Seals part owner Charlie Graham, Joe whacked a single over second scoring two runs. Play was suspended. As Mayor Angelo Rossi came out to congratulate Joe, Joe's mother, who knew nothing about baseball, hugged him for joy. Play resumed and Joe batted two more runs. The ecstatic coverage barely mentioned that the Seals lost that day. Wish we were doing baseball right now, but can't do that. Well, let's move on to our other history for today. 1789, as we said earlier 
it's Bastille Day. The French Revolution begins with the fall of the Bastille Prison. 1850, the first public demonstration of ice made by refrigeration by Florida physician John Gorey. 1914, Robert Goddard is granted the first patent for liquid fuel rocket design. On this date in 1916, the poet Hugo Ball proclaimed the manifesto for a new movement. Its name, Dada. Its aim to, quote, get rid of everything that smacks of journalism, worms, everything nice and right, blinkered, moralistic, Europeanized, and innervated. Meeting at Zurich's Cabaret Voltaire, Ball and a group of collaborators labored briefly but excitingly to create, quote, poetry shorn of intelligible words, music devoid of melodies, and statements in which the message was cannibalized by the absurdity of the language as a protest against European civilization, civilization hell-bent on war. Happy birthday, Dada. Here's a lobster. We'll just put him right here. Okay. Uh, 1921, the Sacco Vanzetti trial. Sacco and Vanzetti were convicted of murder and sentenced to death. Uh, it was later discovered it was due to anti-Italian sentiment. They were set up. Uh, they were executed. And on August 23rd, 1977, the 50th anniversary of the executions, Massachusetts Governor Michael Dukakis proclaimed uh, that Sacco and Vanzetti had been unfairly tried and convicted and that any disgrace should be ever removed from their names. 1946, on this day, Dr. Benjamin Spock's Common Sense Book of Baby and Child Care was published. Very influential. Spock babies were the baby boomers, of course. 1953, the first U.S. national monument dedicated to a black American to preserve the boyhood home of agricultural scientist and inventor George Washington Carver in Newton County, Missouri, is open. Do you believe it took that long? 1969, the film Easy Rider, directed by Dennis Hoffman, starring himself, Peter Fonda, and Jack Nicholson, is released. Also 1969, the United States withdraws $500, $1,000, $5,000, and $10,000 bills from circulation. 1983, Mario Brothers is first released by Nintendo in Japan. Happy birthday to the Mario Brothers. Births, 1857. Fred, Frederick Lewis Maytag, American businessman, head of Maytag. Now, of course, this is a, has a Bay Area connection because Fritz Maytag uh, lives in the Bay Area and is the man who rescued Anchor Steam Beer. You owe him a great debt of gratitude for doing that. Also, Maytag Blue Cheese is uh, manufactured by his family. A wonderful blue cheese. 1862, artist Gustav Klimt. 1865, Annie Jones, uh, the bearded lady. Oh, I forgot to put the date down on this. Sorry about that to George Tobias, who played Abner Kravitz on Bewitched, but I can tell you for sure it was sometime between 1865 and 1910. Also in 1910, Joseph, oh, sorry, William Hanna, along with Joseph Barbera, Hanna Barbera Pictures. 1911, actor Terry Thomas. 1912, Woody Guthrie. This machine kills fascists. 1913, former President Gerald Ford. 1918, Ingmar Bergman, the film director. 1918, Andrew Lawrence, American playwright, wrote the book for West Side Story and Gypsy. 1926, actor Harry Dean Stanton. 1930, actor Polly Bergen. 1938, activist Jerry Rubin. Right on. 1952, evangelist Franklin Graham. Deaths. 1881, on this date, Billy the Kid. William H. Bonney, American frontier outlaw, is shot by Sheriff Pat Garrett and dies of gunshot wounds at the age of 21. Sorry for the private plane flying over right now. Hopefully you can still hear me. 1965, Adlai Stevenson II, U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, Governor of Illinois, and twice the Democratic presidential candidate, he ran against Eisenhower. And that's both times, unfortunately. 
1986, the designer Raymond Lowy. He and Norman Bel Geddes designed pretty much everything you can think of that was well designed in the 20th century. But among Raymond Lowy's designs, the logos for Shell, Exxon, TWA, the Greyhound Scenic Cruiser bus, Coca-Cola vending machines, and the iconic bottle, the Lucky Strike package, cold spot refrigerators, the Studebaker Avanti, and Champion, I believe the Hawk too, and also Air Force One, one of the greatest designers ever. Well, that wraps it up for today's edition. Came in more on time. We're gonna try to keep these to 10 to 15 minutes, hopefully. Until we see you again, stay safe, stay inside. But if you go outside, wear a damn mask. Be kind to one another. Until we see you again, a gracious good day.